Hey everybody, welcome to Fantastic Microbes and where to find them, where we explore the microscopic world. Today we are potentially starting a new series that I'd like to call Microplastic Mondays, where we look at different things under the microscope uh, to see if there's microplastics in them. So today we're starting off with tea, and I found this study from a couple of years ago that says that tea bags can release potentially billions of uh, microplastics and nanoplastics into the water after just being steeped for a about five minutes of time. Now, these guys have some access to some way higher powered microscopes than I have, but I figured I'd follow this experiment along just to see what I could find with my compound microscope. So this is the basic setup here. I've got some tea bags on the left, and then a very fine mesh filter, and then a bowl. And then over here, I have some boiling water. So we're going to let the tea bags boil for a little bit and steep for about five minutes. Then we're going to run them through this very fine mesh filter. Now, this is fine enough that the microplastics should get caught in there, and then we should be able to collect them pretty easily. The study that I read cut the bags open and they let all of the contents out because the thing that we're mainly studying is the plastic bag. However, one thing that I'm concerned about is that it does make it easier for things to escape. Now, according to the study, they ran a control and they didn't find any difference between the amount of microplastics released from the uh, cut bags and then the non-cut bags. Uh, they just cut them to uh, just isolate the variables for this one, but they were able to find microplastics in both. So that's what we're doing. Um, in this particular case, I forgot to uh, let the papers and the strings be out. So we're going to see a little bit of that in the sample. But I just kind of let these steep in this really hot water for about five, six minutes. After that, I went ahead and ran it through the filter, and this is a picture of what we see. So at the bottom, there's little drips of water, and that is what contains the microplastics and some other debris. So, but before I go into that, let's go ahead and just look at the bags themselves. So this is the tea bag on its own, and you can see it is just composed of very fine uh, woven fibers, which are presumably made out of nylon, which are very easy to work with, and uh, that's why they're made for things like this. So uh, we're looking for some uh, small, thin strings, and uh, under heat, they supposedly break down. And uh, one thing that we aren't able to see are the nanoplastics as well. So those are the really, really small particles that uh, even a compound microscope wouldn't be good enough. You'd need an electron microscope uh, for those. Uh, because nanoplastics uh, could be down to the size of things, you know, like DNA and stuff like that. Uh, but I was able to see a decent amount of small little strings here and there that I believe were from the uh, nylon mesh. And, uh, but again, this is kind of just citizen science level stuff. I don't have an infrared microscope, uh, which with infrared uh, spectroscopy, uh, we'd be able to shine, you know, infrared light at these, uh, at all of these particles. And uh, the plastic ones give off a certain light signature uh, reflection. Uh, another way that you can identify plastic under the microscope uh, is if you have a special dye. Um, you can uh, put some dye, the dye is called Nile Red, uh, kind of like the YouTube channel, and uh, essentially it adheres to the plastics, but it doesn't adhere to other organic material. So if I had that dye, I would put that in the sample and then I would use a fluorescence microscope which would uh, essentially make the plastic glow. And uh, that way you'd be able to see which stuff is plastic and which stuff isn't. So there are multiple ways to do this, you know, at the very high grade technical level, but um, at the citizen science level with uh, limited funding, this is basically what we've got. A compound microscope, we look at the mesh before and then we look at this after. Um, these, all, all of these things, pretty clearly look like fibers to me. Uh, again, here is the mesh, but this time it's under dark field. This is a uh, uncooked one. So you can see th uh, they're all still pretty well together. 
Now, one of the things that I'm still questioning, though, is the method in the study where they cut the bags open to remove all of the tea leaves. Essentially, they did this because they said that certain uh, tea leaves and stuff have oils that would interfere with uh, their imaging. But take a look at this. So this is where I had cut the tea bag. And as you can see, you know, these tiny little fibers, they could easily fall off into the sample. Now, at the top here, uh, it's kind of not focused. And there, now it's coming into focus. This is the top that I didn't cut. This was probably heat sealed from the uh, manufacturing itself. So uh, there are a couple fibers that were loose, but those might have gotten loose from me cutting as well. So again, as far as the methodology of this goes, um, these people said that they didn't have any major significant difference between uh, the ones that they had cut open uh, to, re to remove all of the tea leaves and then the ones that they did not cut open. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. You guys tell me what you think about this. Next up, we are going to be looking at Celestial Seasonings. Now, this is the tea that I typically drink, and uh, you can see on here there are some notes about sustainable packaging and what this is made of. If you look at it underneath the microscope, before it is steeped and cooked. This is basically what it looks like. It is, uh, you know, very different than the nylon. And uh, in fact, they claim that they use, uh, I believe, some uh, papery material. But I did find on one Reddit post that somebody asked them in an email if they used any plastic in their bags. And apparently, uh, in their response, they received, uh, they mentioned that they do still use plastic in the folds that, that kind of seals the bag. Um, they are still uh, very interested in not using any plastics at all, but at this current point they haven't found a good alternative for that yet. So I did two different experiments with the Celestial Seasonings one. Um, one of them I steeped these uh, bags in, and then another one I, you know, did the same thing as the Tivana brand where I you know, cut them and removed all of the other things. So in this first sample, I wasn't able to really see too much, you know. Uh, these are like, this is some plant matter. This uh, also looks kind of like plant matter. It's not very uniform. Uh, there were a lot of really tiny little particles that, uh, you know, this is at um, 100 times zoom and here's at uh, 400 times. Um, but again, lots of plant matter and stuff. I wasn't seeing hardly any of those uh, long, thin strands. I mean, I did see like this one here, uh, but this was in the second attempt where I had cut the bag open. So this is what uh, probably, you know, maybe fell out of that crimped portion of the bag. Again, I just saw lots of plant matter, but um, really tiny little specks and things. Now, due to my current setup, I'm a little hesitant to confirm or deny whether these really small specks are microplastics or not. Um, if they are, like the study said, they could be potentially in the numbers of billions. Now, if that is the case, then my vote would probably be to stick with something like this that uses more of a paper-based uh, option, uh, or there's loose leaf teas as well. But that's something that we'll have to look at at the next episode. So if you guys enjoyed this, give it a like and a comment, and if you aren't subscribed, we would love to have you join the party. Uh, I also have a Patreon where if you donate any of the money that goes into that Patreon goes into funding for episodes like this. So maybe if we get enough patrons in the future, we could maybe mod my microscope to make it a fluorescence microscope and get some dye and that way we can better confirm that these things are microplastics or not. So anyway, thank you all so much for watching and if you want to, there's also some sweet videos that you can check out here.